When I went to the Elmley Nature Reserve on the 1st of June, I arrived very early, long before the reserve actually opened. So I took the uh, time to go along to the RSPB viewing station on the other end of the Isle of Sheppey. There I saw this wonderful kestrel and also a marsh harrier. In fact, a couple of marsh harriers flying around. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I've come to the Elmley Nature Reserve on the Isle of Sheppey near Sheerness. It's the first time I've ever been here but I've heard about it and so decided to get up early, come up here and so I think I'm the first person in this morning. I uh, got in through the gate just before nine o'clock because it doesn't really open till nine o'clock. I'm sitting in the car because uh, on the road that goes through the nature reserve uh, you can pause to photograph or video uh, whatever you see um, but they do request that you do not get out of the car and uh, stay in the car uh, all the way along this road um, and so that's what I'm doing. I've just uh, seen a beautiful heron which I've taken some photographs and uh, a couple of clips of uh, which uh, you'll see shortly and um, yeah so this is a, a first uh, such a sighting so quickly hopefully it is a, encouraging for the rest of the morning and uh, I will see what we can now see come with me just managed to get a couple of shots of uh, red kite, I think it was, uh, flying and uh, it's a little frustrating trying to photograph from the car. Uh, I've got my bean bag here uh, on the win open window sill to rest uh, my camera lens on but um, I'm using the 800 millimeter lens and it's quite a big beast therefore rather unwieldy in the restrictions of sitting in the driving seat of the car. Um, so when you see a bird like the red kite in the air and you think, ah, I want to get that shot, you've got to pull up, turn the engine off and uh, get, then swing the camera into position because you can't drive with it there for obvious reasons. And um, at which time the kite had moved into a less favourable position, but at least I did manage to get uh, a couple of shots, so uh, I'm hoping to get some more. Well, this is the second sighting of the morning. There's a cormorant there standing on that post. The road I refer to is really a long dusty track and you're asked to keep to an absolute maximum of 15 miles an hour so as not to disturb the birds. But it also gave uh, a lot of very good opportunities because the wildlife was pretty close to the road. Now here's a lapwing on the ground. This road basically takes you from the entrance gate through to the visitor centre. It took me around 45 minutes to drive it, but that was because A, I was driving very slowly, probably about five miles an hour, and stopping many times to take photographs and, uh, or video clips like this one. Sometimes the birds got almost too close. On one occasion, a beautiful yellow wagtail landed right in front of the car. I stopped, but it was so close I couldn't get it in focus with the 800mm lens. There was certainly an excellent variety of the birds to photograph and uh, video. And as we can see here, they were very close, so great, great photographic opportunities.
Once you get up to the visitor centre, it's time to leave the car and there is a choice of walks you can take. I decided for a fairly long one which would take me out to a couple of hides. And through one of the water channels I could see Coot with the family and then I came to this viewing station which looks out over the, the water between the Isle of Sheppey and uh, the main, main part of Kent. And here I could see an oyster catcher on the beach that was busy looking for its lunch. Actually, it was probably breakfast because it's still that early in the morning. There I'm looking back at the visitor centre and this is the pathway which we need to keep to. But it's a uh, it's very good walk. Here are a couple of little chicks of uh, coot chicks and then a heron that I spotted peering out of uh, one of the ditches. There are plenty of these waterways that crisscross the reserve and of course therefore we expect to find ducks. When I got to the first hide, I was delighted to find quite a number of these beautiful avocet. We're well, now inside the first hide, which I think is called the Well Marsh hide. Uh, a lot of water birds outside. Um, <laughs> sadly, the the winds that we've been experiencing, the northeasterly winds uh, that we've had for some time now, several days, several weeks almost, is still with us. So it's, um, despite being the 1st of June, it's actually quite chilly. Um, so it's quite nice to come into the hide. Um, this was about a 40 minute uh, walk from the visitor centre. Um, I can see the next hide not far away, so I'm going to go down there in a few minutes to see what I can see from that location. Okay, I've now come on to the second hide, which is called Counter War Hide. Um, and uh, yeah, I can see some grey lag geese with the youngsters up there. A couple of cameras, plus various other birds, so uh, take a few shots. As well as the large number of uh, grey lag goslings that were around, Here's a delightful pair of uh, black-headed gull chicks.
And looking back over there, that's the uh, well marsh hide that I was in uh, a few minutes earlier. I had set my Nikon Z9 to shoot video at 120 frames per second to give me plenty of scope to slow down. So this clip you're looking at now, the Avocet feeding, has been slowed down to about 50%, therefore you can see much more clearly how it's uh, picking up little things and uh, eating them. I've already mentioned the fact that there was a very strong wind, so I've slowed this clip right down because uh, this bird was moving backwards and forwards at incredible speed. Um, also the wind made it very difficult to keep this, the camera steady as the uh, long lens provided quite a lot of windage. But here are some stills I took, this beautiful little bird, which is of course a reed bunting. Finally, and to close, here are some shots of this little egret landing. Wherever we are in the world, we're surrounded by such fabulous nature. But I only think it's true to say, what a wonderful world.